I want you to ponder these four questions. Here's the first one, and that's why. Why pay the price? Why work this hard? Why go this far? Why try to learn this much? Why try to do it all? Why try to see it all? Why try to have it all? Why do it? Why learn it? Why study? Why put yourself out? Why try to take on this much responsibility? Why develop yourself to the full? Why try to become all that you can possibly become? Why try to earn as much as you can earn, share as much as you can share, develop every skill you possibly can, see every human you possibly can, go to every class you possibly can, touch everybody you possibly can? Why do that much? Why go that far? Why share that much? Why give that much away? Why try to see everything? Why try to do everything? Why try to become everything? That's a good question, why? And you're the only one personally that can answer that question for yourself. You've got to have your own list of whys. Work on your list of whys. One of the big thrusts for success is to come up with a strong enough why. If the why is powerful, the how is easy. But if the why isn't strong, if your goals aren't powerful, if the vision isn't clear, the old prophet said, without a vision we die, without a vision we perish, without a dream we're nothing. I'm asking you to sit down with your family and develop a dream strategy. I'm asking you to make a list of what you, what you want. What kind of health do you want? What kind of skills do you want? What kind of income do you want? What kind of gifts do you wish to bestow? What kind of power would you like to have? What kind of influence would you like to have? I'm asking you to go home and work on the why. Spend some time as you fly over the clouds and over the ocean back to where you came from. I'm asking you to have a vision by the time you've reached home of why, why you want this kind of income, why you want this kind of recognition and these kinds of skills. I'm asking you to develop your own list of why. Now here's number two. The first question to ponder when you go home is why. Here's another good answer to why. It's the second question, why not? Why not see how much you can earn? Why not see how much you can learn? Why not see how many skills you can develop? Why not see what kind of person you can become? Why not see what kind of influence you can have? Why not see how many people you can rescue from oblivion? Why not see how many people you can reach? I want you to establish some of your goals. I want you to give thoughtful consideration to your goals. And why not? If we've got good health for many, why not the rest? If it's happened for you, why not others? And why not you? I want you to take that personal. Why not? Why not? You've got to stay here till you go. I mean, what else are you gonna do? Why not see how much you can do, how far you can go? Now here's number three. Why not you? I wish I could say that to each of you individually, but it would take a couple of lifetimes to sit down and talk with each of you individually. But I would rather do that. I'd love to spend a couple of days with each of you personally and pour out my heart, my soul, what's going on in my head. What's going on with me? See if we couldn't connect and find something valuable. But time doesn't permit for us to have those intimate conversations and get to know each other that well. So I've got to do it from up here. But I want you to take it personal. And my personal question to you is why not you? You've got the brains. You can make decisions. You can study the plan. You can change your life. You can grow immensely in the next few years. You can make your dreams come true. You can build a financial wall around your family. Nothing can get through. You can become healthy. You can become powerful. Why not you? And now here's my last question. My very last question on the questions to ponder is why not now? Think about the potential within you that's still untapped. Consider these two questions during your time of reflection. Number one, 
What could I have achieved in the past had I been more diligent? Could I have been more disciplined? Worked smarter instead of harder? Said no more often to social functions, to community commitments? What could I have achieved in the past had I tried a little differently? Only you can answer this question. It's very personal. So that's question number one. What could I have achieved in the past if I tried a little more diligently? Now here's number two. How can I achieve more in the future? Well, if you take some quality time to thoughtfully answer question number one, you'll probably have a clue as to what's needed in the future. Do you need to work more diligently? Do you need to be more disciplined? Do you need to work smarter instead of harder? Do you need to say no more often? Do you need to manage your time better? That's one of the keys to reflection. You can put down on paper what worked for you in the past and figure out ways to translate this information into the future. You can design your better future if you can learn from your past. You can face your future with more excitement, more anticipation, when you design a future worth getting excited about. You can see your future and have it pull you, but don't forget to appreciate yourself for what you have done so far, for what you have done today. Know that your appreciation of yourself and your achievements will continue to fuel the fire of ambition. Self-appreciation is an integral part of success. You must develop a strong appreciation for your own style, your own methods, your own process. Take a self-appreciation inventory. Ask yourself a few questions. Start with number one. What have I achieved in the last four days, the last two weeks, the last six months, the last year, the last ten years? What have I achieved during these time periods? Write it down. Take a self-appreciation inventory of all you've done and all you've accomplished and all you've become. Take inventory of yourself. Now compare this list to your goals. Have you accomplished all you set out to do in the last four days, two weeks, six months, one year, ten years? Compare your list. Maybe you've been so busy trying to reach your goals that you haven't taken the time to sit back and reflect on where you've really been. Look back at your list and say, wow, I really have been through a lot. I really have learned a lot. Look what I've done. Look what I've become. I wasn't like this 10 years ago or even one year ago. Look at me. I'm doing okay. Building your ambition takes little steps. One step at a time, one day at a time, one week at a time. And it's like taking your family to a reunion where people haven't seen your kids for six months or even a year. They say, my, look how you've grown. Well, you know your kids have grown, but when you see them every day, it's hard to notice. So write down all your accomplishments and see where you've been and what you've done and who you've become. You'll say, Oh, look how I've grown. And that's step one in taking a self-appreciation inventory. Now here's step two. What could I have achieved that I didn't? Be honest now, this is your inventory. Nobody else has to see it. What could you have achieved over the last week, the last month, the last quarter, the last year? What could you have achieved that you didn't? Would a game plan have made a difference? Would your direction have made a difference? Would greater preparation have made a difference? Would more discipline have made a difference? In how you changed your habits, changed your life, would time management have made a difference? Major time over minor time. Ask yourself, what could I have achieved that I didn't? Now, take this one step further with number three. What do I want to achieve in the next four days, the next two weeks, the next six months, over the next year, over the next ten years? What do I want to achieve? Well, all this falls in line with your goals. What you could achieve has to fall in line with what you want to achieve. What you could do has to line up with what you want to do. 
and what you could become has to meet what do I want to become. Everything affects everything. And through the proper disciplines practiced every day, every day, every day, through the proper disciplines, the what could I do has to match up with what do I want to do. And here's number four. What can I do to achieve this that I'm not doing now? What could I do to achieve my goals that I'm not doing now? What things do I need to work on that I'm not working on now? Remember, it's easy to do the disciplines, the little things every day, and it's easy not to. It's easy to, it's easy not to. Look back at the list you made of your three most important work-related goals. Look back at your list of the three most important personal and spiritual goals. How are you doing with these? Are you making progress a little each day, a little each day? Are you appreciative of the progress you've made so far? It's important that you take time out to acknowledge yourself, your achievements, what you've done so far, where you've come, who you've become. Self-appreciation is a stage in building ambition that takes a little more maturity, a greater resolve, knowing that you'll do it until until you get it done and taking the time out to acknowledge yourself for doing it. Self-appreciation comes from already being firmly set on the course of positive self-direction, being on the right track, having that wonderful blend of humility and self-esteem, knowing within yourself that you're accomplishing your goals and knowing yourself enough and being confident in yourself enough to avoid needless bragging.
Thank you.